absolutely beautiful Leo friends and welcome to your December horoscope for 2020, our last monthly together for the year, which is just wild that we've made it through 2020. So whether this is your first time joining me, welcome, welcome, or your hundredth time, you've been with me for years. I just, it's so significant to travel an entire year together. So thank you for letting me be with you and thank you for being here. This month is movable. It is movable and it is the real setup for us moving into 2021. It gives us immediate clues what we're going to be traveling it with and working on. So this month is significant and I also feel like it is lovely because we get a little bit of a deep breath. We get to go, oh my God, things are moving forward, you know, which really I think feels good based on a lot of what we've experienced, which was we had to hold and be in our pattern and readdress and rethink about some things this year. So we get a deep breath, we get to get moving, which is brilliant. Now the eat and greets are going on and they are booking out into 2021. I am so excited. So this month we will be bringing Patricia Wall, Walsh, <laughs> Rose Marcus will be here, Ali Gully will be here. Kira Sutherland will be here talking a little bit about some medical astrology. We'll have Victor Oliver coming to talk about draconic astrology. If you haven't heard about that or seen it work, it blew my mind. As well, Peter Burns will be here talking about astrology and reading palms. So this definitely goes together. So if that's up your alley, you'll love that. Linda Bird will be here. If you watch anything at Astrology Hub, Linda comes in and she's just got this really deep, energetic, psychological practice that just is, I mean, you get down and deep and in there. Anyway, so they're coming and you can always check out the Eat and Greets ad free with me over on my Patreon. And you can always watch them for free financially free right here on YouTube as well. Okay. All right, Leo, let's get in here and talk about what's going on in December. So right at the beginning of the month on the first, we've got Mercury entering into the energy of Sagittarius. Now this is going to light up your fifth house space and the fifth house stays busy this month. It is an energy of focus for you this month. So as I'm talking through these, what I would love for you to do is think Think about how this contextually fits into your life in the fifth house, because the fifth house is the house of children, but it is also the house of what you baby. What are your conceptions of something that you're starting, a hobby, your self-expression, any place in your life where you are taking a risk. So really round this out so that it applies to your life because the fifth house is busy. We've got Mercury coming into the energy of Sagittarius in that fifth house. This is bringing busyness. Lots of conversation, lots of thinking, lots of details around very big picture or big ideas or self-confidence kinds of things. Now, I also think because we've got this eclipse happening in the fifth house and then Venus is going to come into fifth house this month, what this is also telling me is that children or the children things in your life are, it's a very big deal. There's like a redesign um, maybe even a re-expressing in this area. This can also be really good and it's great and it's magnetized and there's a lot of good things coming to this beginning joyful child play kind of energy, but it can also be so energetically heavy that you wanna make sure you take a little bit of a break. Okay, it's exciting to have the fifth house lit up and I love when people do stuff with it. But sometimes, especially with an eclipse in this area, you might want to, if you don't really have to do it, if you don't really have to take the kids out, if you don't really have to, whatever, the energy is just so palpable in this area that sometimes it can be draining. So you get the good and the bad with it or the challenges that come with it as well. But this area is going to get busy. So as we come to the end of the year, the other thing to think about is if you had this business idea or you had this project that you want to start or you were waiting to do those fertility treatments whatever it is December is your time frame where these things get moving forward the eclipse is going to happen on the 14th of December and this is going to be the new moon solar eclipse in the energy of Sagittarius so this is going to be where you plant those seeds of intention to begin a new adventure, Sagittarius, to begin new truths, new optimism, new self-confidence, new teachers, new expansion, right? So this eclipse, though, gives you the energy to say you're not just going to have four weeks to work this thing out. You're going to have six months 
to work this out, to let this area develop, to let those children, to let that idea, to let this love, to let this expression develop and bring itself out in a very self-confident kind of way. So just know that you've got six months investment in whatever you plant your seeds of intention to begin here, okay? Now, on the 15th is a little bit of a busy day. We've got Chiron coming out of retrograde in the energy of Aries, which will light up your ninth house space. And we've also got Venus entering into that energy of Sagittarius. Now, this Chiron energy here, Chiron is our wounded healer, but I also teach him as our greatest teacher because you've hurt this way. You've questioned, you've been to the depths with this thing. So because you've done that, you know how to help somebody else through that, or you can even just relate to them. And it's like a burden shared is half a burden. So we really get the gift of the pain, but also the release when it comes to Chiron. Now, Chiron's been retrograde in the energy of Aries, so we have all been re-looking at our identity. We have all been re-looking at the body, our image, how we want to represent ourselves, our values, the principal values and principles in general that guide my identity. We've all been looking at that. So now that Chiron is out of retrograde and it's here in this ninth house, it's time for us to roll these shoulders back and start taking our, our image out there, start taking this identity out there, start taking our principles out there. And for you, in the ninth house space, this is publishing, marketing broadcasting, places where you stretch beyond your horizon. You know, maybe it's that training. Did you need to get that? And now you, you've you gotten the training or you're entering into the training because you'd like to refine that identity. Is this an expansion of language? Is this something in the legal field for you, right? Where it's literally changed your identity being involved in these particular areas. This Chiron energy is saying, all right, Leo, stand up, shoulders back. Let's go be that identity that we've been working on and let's go help other people to show their identities as well, their true selves, maybe even to encounter things that don't match the image that they've set up for themselves or that we have as well. Ooh, somebody, I don't know who you are. This is very exciting. You got a whole new identity because maybe it was at the end of October or November, you got married you got married and so now you definitely have a newly expanded identity in this marriage appears to be somebody got married. But this could also be that you joined something else so you became an energy together. Oh, that's very exciting. Please tell me who that is in the comment section down below. Very cool. All right, we've also got Venus entering into the energy of Sagittarius. So bringing the magnetism, bringing some harmony, bringing some good things. She's our smallest benefic, but she's benefic. She's trying to bring benefit to us in the energy of Sagittarius. So around your fifth house, this brings a smoothness to your self-expression. It also brings that magnetizing, drawing into you energy to your children, to your projects to these things that you're going to take a risk on. Venus really likes this. Now, Venus in the fifth house, just in general too, if you are single and trying to mingle, even in these uh, pandemic times, Venus is very good for bringing somebody maybe even foreign or in a foreign way to your doorstep to engage with. Somebody is also... Um, it appears you're going to be able to actually move forward with your adoption process. So whomever that is, congratulations to you, okay? On the 17th, we have got Saturn entering into the energy of Aquarius. Now, Saturn has been in the energy of Capricorn for a few years here. So really working this space of the sixth house, your daily routine, your body, your health, your mental wellness, your projects, your independent work. And now it's time to move on. And here it is. We've got the energy with Saturn moving back into the energy of Aquarius that's going to light up your seventh house now. As Saturn comes into this sign, we are going to crystallize our relationships. You are going to do some heavy learning this year about relationships. Now I ask you, Leo, come back to this year between March and July. What was happening in your relationships besides a pandemic that maybe threw you in the house with somebody? And that is also really good because you learned a lot about whether or not you want to hang out with this person or not, right? And, and that includes, you know, you learned a lot about does this business relationship actually fit? You've been doing identity work like everybody else. You got to figure out who you were while you had to sit down in the house, right? <laughs> so in your relationships, where you consciously choose to relate to another human between March and July, what happened for you? 
What did you get a signal of? Because that was our first little treat, our first little snicket of what is happening and you're going to work on for the next two and a half years. So this could easily be as Saturn comes here, you do decide to get married. You do decide to crystallize or commit to a relationship in your relationship zone. I also think, and in my experience, Saturn tests the relationships in our life to make sure they are solid. It shows us the cracks. It puts things in front of us where we have to have those serious conversations. But if you've been working on things as well, well, Saturn comes to bring the benefits. It's like, thank you. You have been doing the work. Let me bless this union, whether it be business, spiritual, whatever, right? So Saturn moves in that day, but look back between March and July, what was happening? Cause you're going to continue that as we get here. Now on the 19th, <clears throat> We see Jupiter coming into the energy of Aquarius and they're not together yet for the grand mutation, not yet. They're gonna get there, but Jupiter comes on in here into the energy of Aquarius also in your seventh house. Now, Jupiter in Aquarius moves much more easily, freely, and is ready to expand this area than he could in Capricorn where he's in his fall. He still does good work, but in the energy of Aquarius, Jupiter gets to expand. So I will tell you, while Saturn is crystallizing and making serious these relationships, Jupiter is also coming to expand them. He's like, hey, are you single and you want to engage? Okay, cool. Uh, do you have a business and you want to engage? Okay, cool. Jupiter is coming to bring the wisdom of that expansion to this particular area of your life. It's also bringing a lot of new ideas around relationships to you as well. So I love these energies together. Now on the 20th, we are gonna see Mercury entering into the energy of Capricorn. So this will light up that sixth house space. Things about your daily routine are gonna become conversational. At this point, you're gonna to have to make some decisions. There's some talking that has to go on. Maybe even your mental health, you wanna make sure you are on top of that. Capricorn here wants to make sure that in your sixth house zone, you are able to achieve productively in your daily routine, in your health and wellness, in how you're being of service to other people. For example, if you are a caretaker to someone, are there conversations about the day that you need to have to make sure that that day is as productive as can be? So that's certainly something that could be going on there. Now on the 21st, busy, busy day, the sun moves into the energy of Capricorn. So you've got four weeks of motivated light, heat, energy, and vitality available in the sixth house zone. So if you do need to change up that daily routine, boom shakalaka, it is available for you. You are motivated to be Capricorn, to be serious, to look at is, is your ability to achieve on par? Does the freelance work you do, are you connected in a way that allows you to achieve? But the sun coming into the energy of Capricorn tells us, we are at a solstice. Now, if you're in the United States, we're going to obviously be having the winter solstice. So getting ready to pare down and be chilly. If you are some of our Aussie friends, you're going to be doing a summer solstice. So wherever you're at, you're getting a solstice. But what it means is we're at a new change of season. We are in a new space. We are in a new breath and we're ready to move forward in a different way. This cardinal energy says, yeah, Let's do it. Let's begin. Now, at the same time, we've got Jupiter and Saturn coming together for that conjunction that we've been talking about, looking at, writing about, hearing about for years and definitely through 2020. And this is going to be in the energy of Aquarius. So they haven't been together for 20 years. This is a coming together. This is what we call the grand mutation, where we literally, in the area of your relationships, you are mutating. We are mutating as a society. The way that you fit and your ideas around relationships fit out in the world, the relationships you have to connect with, they become under a state of mutation and become what's next. It's not so much about what is so heavy and so physical. The Industrial Revolution, think about how heavy that was. It was very much so the energy of Earth. Now we move up and out into the energy of air what else who else is out there this classic alignment is really helpful so if you are over the age of you know 30 look back 20 years ago what was happening in your life track this back 20 years ago what was a similar kind of shakeup that you you would have had right so you can think about that but just know as we get to the 21st this energy happens and it sets the tone for 2021 and moving forward. It sets the tone in your serious, conscious, chosen relationships. It crystallizes them, makes them wise, and also allows for the expansion. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, as we close out this month, we get to the 30th, 29th, 30th, just depending on where you're at, and we're gonna have a full moon in the energy of Cancer. Now, I love this because one, it's just a full moon, okay? It's like not just a full moon. There's never just a full moon, but it's not an eclipse. It's not anything like that. This is like the deep breath as we get ready to close out 2020 I think so this full moon in the energy of cancer which is just right 
um, to your neighbor. So it lights up this 12th house space. Now the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or an adjustment needs to be made to this area. So truly in your 12th house region, in taking a break, in resting, in relaxing, in looking at your self-defeating patterns and, 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 and thought processes, things that are projects you've been working on in quiet, there's an adjustment here. You know, I think of cancer energy as well as the home, right? So in your home, have you just been tucked away and it's like, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. But in 2021, you're going to actually have to come out here. So it's almost like making a little bit of peace with it's like, it's time to move. It's time to go out and actually see people in their little eyeballs again in public, you know? So there's a lot that comes from the hidden space that I think this moon addresses. For some people, I also think that if this year has been particularly hard on you mentally or you're still struggling at this place, this is an energy of healing and respite and a little bit of solitude, but it's also an energy where I think you can investigate getting the help that you need to maybe treat something mentally that has been highly stimulated or overstimulated to you in this particular energy and bring that sense of nourishment, um, nurturing and healing to this particular area. Now it is a full moon in your 12th house. Exes can come back through the 12th house, whether it be in a vision, whether it be in a dream, whether it be that they come and stand on your doorstep. It is absolutely available. But if they are coming back, the question is, is this nourished? Is this finished? Is this healed? Or is this what it needs to be next? So beautiful month ahead, very movable, absolutely the setup for where we're going in 2021. So take note, write down in your journal what's happening, what was happening for you between March and July, what's happening to you as you are experiencing this month in a very body somatic kind of way. Take note of that because you'll be able to connect back with that as you get into 2021 and say, oh, I think this is where this shift is asking me to go instead of being so shocked by it, okay? All right, Leo, you are big, you are beautiful, you are bold, and I cannot wait to see you throughout 2021. But thank you again so much for letting me travel with you here in 2020. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Leo.